Hi everyone, this is Top 3D Shop, and in this video, we'll tell you about a new speedy 3D printer from the Chinese company Creality, K1. Creality 3D has been in business since 2014, producing a fairly diverse range of 3D printing equipment, mainly for the hobbyist segment. In the early years of development, it gained its popularity with products such as Ender 3 and CR10. In addition to FDM machines, the company's production capacity allows it to produce industrial 3D printers, resin 3D printers, electronics for their operation, 3D scanners, and printing consumables. During these nine years, the company has earned trust due to the quality of its products as well as some interesting innovations. Creality K1 is a brand new line of 3D printers. It's characterized by high printing speed and equipped with various modern features such as automatic bed leveling, additional cooling of the build area, and improved air circulation in the chamber. It's possible to connect a camera for monitoring and creating time lapses as well as install the optional LiDAR for a proper first layer and auto calibration of parameters based on the material used. The upgraded version K1 Max includes these features by default. As usual, let's start our review with the supply package. The dimensions of the main box promise a rather compact design of the device. Everything inside is packed securely with foam with the contents neatly organized in boxes. Importantly, the printer comes fully assembled. Despite its capabilities and functionality, Creality K1 is a hobbyist 3D printer, so it has a rather modest package. Upon opening the boxes, you will find a user manual with color illustrations in several languages, as well as necessary tools for maintenance and operation, such as hex keys, an open-end wrench for nozzle replacement, wire cutters, spatula, glue stick, spool holder, control screen, extra rubber dampers for feet, and 200 grams of special hyper PLA filament. The design of the Creality K1 series is based on 3D printers of the Chinese company Bamboo Lab, especially when it comes to the mechanics. However, the printers are completely different. The K1 model features a closed and really compact build. This is how it looks next to the other Creality series, Sir Moon D3 and Ender. The enclosure is made of cast aluminum parts, two frames at the top and bottom, connected by four posts around the perimeter. The back panel and the lower part forming the electronics compartment are of ABS plastic. The sides and top cover are acrylic, and the door is made of glass. It closes tightly and is firmly fixed by magnets. There is only one drawback. The door opens slightly more than to 90 degrees, so you need to be more careful when working with the printer. All the transparent elements are made of gray tinted material, which gives a modern and balanced look to the device. The claimed printing speed is ensured due to the sturdy frame. The printer benefits from the fast Core XY kinematics. As with their other product lines, Creality has implemented it here traditionally with cylindrical guides, but this time with brass graphite bushings as bearings. Unlike ball bearings, the bushings make the mechanics much quieter. Two powerful stepper motors are responsible for moving the printing tool. Another factor making fast printing possible is the compact and lightweight print head. At the same time, it contains the peripheral control electronics, a dual drive feeder, and extremely productive hot end the maximum flow rate of which can gain up to 32 cubic millimeters per second. A powerful fan is also set to cool the extruder on both sides. K1 uses a long nozzle for performance, which is similar in size and thread to the Volcano hot end. One can also install a hardened nozzle for printing with composite materials. The K1 series is equipped with an additional fan for the build area. After all, 3D printing is basically a layer-by-layer -layer deposition of material. Therefore, print quality largely depends on cooling of each layer. This is particularly important when dealing with overhangs. In such cases, the fan helps to solve the issues of elements tilted at a certain angle. There's also an extra fan on the rear side of the case for better air circulation inside the chamber. All the functionality is achieved through advanced software that is based on the popular Clipper firmware. It is capable of dampening the resonances arising from the movement of the print head at high speeds. This effect manifests itself in the form of so-called ringing on the surface of the printed objects, that is, equally spaced, repeating lines that gradually disappear from the sharp corners of the model. For the first time among hobbyist 3D printers, the company has abandoned the cantilever bed in this series. The platform is now moved on three cylindrical guides by three screws that are synchronized by a timing belt in the electronics compartment. A system of four load sensors is used for platform positioning control and construction of the surface curvature grid. Thanks to this solution, no user intervention is required for bed leveling. As for the bed cover, the printer has a removable steel plate with a special coating, declared by the manufacturer as PEI, not with the usual granular, but matte surface. It provides great adhesion and works well with additional chemicals. The magnetic base is thick enough and holds the plate very well. It's easy to install thanks to special cutouts that conveniently rest against the screws. 
The XY axis print head parking is also carried out without any limit switches. The electronics detect movement to the extreme positions thanks to the sensorless homing function, which is based on modern stepper motor drivers, a nice touch with the above functionality of the device. However, as the machine can continue the task after a power outage, there seems to be no guarantee that it will resume printing from where it ended, which might lead to an error in parking positioning. The printer uses a 4.3-inch touchscreen for control. The menu is conveniently organized in sections and is visually similar to that of the senior model of the previously mentioned brand. The touch system is responsive, changing sections and selecting operations works smoothly. Everything you need is arranged in a plain and intuitive way. If necessary, one can set an automatic shutoff timer for the screen. With Creality K1, it is possible to connect a camera for monitoring and recording time lapses. For this purpose, there is a connector on the right side of the chamber. The camera with a mount is purchased separately. On the back side where the printing material is fed, there is a filament runout sensor. Now, let's prepare the machine to work. With the Creality K1 series, there's no need to assemble the printer. All you have to do is perform the following steps. Install the screen. When dealing with it, you need to plug in the connector and secure the screen with a spike-to-groove connection. Install rubber dampers on the printer's feet. Attach the spool holder on the back wall and unscrew the three screws that hold the platform. After that, the printer can be plugged in, making sure that the switch on the unit is set for the voltage of your household power supply. Turn on the device and go through the entire preparation procedure following the prompts on the screen. In earlier firmware versions, other languages may appear only after the update. The next step is to unscrew the screws, which we've already done. Then, make sure that nothing interferes with the movement of the platform and the print head in the build chamber. Connecting to Wi-Fi can be skipped, as the printer can still be used with a USB flash drive. If you decide to connect the machine to the network and the procedure is successful, the defined IP address will appear on the screen. Next, choose the time zone and connect to Creality Cloud if necessary. The device offers a self-check procedure, so you can enjoy the process of automatic adjustment. It starts with calibration of resonance compensation, with the printer making loud resonating sounds, which is normal. Then, it comes to bed mapping by 25 points. After that, it's time to feed filament. This is very easy thanks to the lever on the feeder of the direct extruder. It releases the thread from the gears pushing it. It's also possible to remove the tube for manual feeding instead of using the screen menu. To do this, remove the blue horseshoe part from the tube retainer. In preparation for printing, first the print head is placed in the center of the platform. Then the nozzle is cleaned in a pretty unconventional way, with cooling the hot end to a certain temperature. After that, the bed is probed on all four corners to construct the surface curvature grid. The nozzle is cleaned again by printing a line on the left side of the platform, and only then real 3D printing starts. If necessary, the bed leveling procedure can be disabled in the menu when starting a file for printing. In our opinion, there's no need to calibrate the bed for every project. This is relevant when changing the material, for example, from low temperature PLA to more demanding ABS. To check the bed leveling, this model was printed in a single layer covering almost the entire printing area. And this test model was printed at the highest possible speed of 600 mm per second and took 7 minutes to print. Not bad. The Benchy took just over 16 minutes to print, instead of the usual 40 to 50 on other 3D printers, and only about a minute slower than Bamboo Lab. Next up is printing a PLA vase. It's a simple and easy way to check the mechanics of the entire Z-axis. Plus, there may be software issues with the print mode itself. Everything turned out fine, except for a small ripple on the walls, which is clearly visible up close. Due to the peculiarities of the software and mechanics, slow print speeds may cause ripples on the part surface, but at speeds above 150 mm per second, it's hardly noticeable. Unfortunately, printing of vases is not about speed. With ABS, we decided to print some technical parts for assembly of 3D printers. This material is also not suitable for high speeds since they affect its sinterability. However, nothing prevents us from speeding up printing of the outer walls. As in previous cases, PETG is not a fan of elevated speed, but despite its fluidity and propensity for stringing, K1 provided quite acceptable results at high speeds. For printing with nylon, we created an individual profile in the slicer. The layer height was set to 0.12, with the speed limit lowered to 60 and all the fans turned off. Plus, we added a raft. As an adhesive, we used Creality's PVP-based glue stick and heated the chamber to 45 degrees Celsius before printing. There were also no problems with PACF. The printing parameters were the same, but we replaced the nozzle with a 0.6mm hardened one as recommended for composites. With TPU, there can be issues with feeding. It's difficult to push the thread through the filament sensor. To solve the problem, one can feed the material directly by suspending the spool above the printer with any rigid material for the sensor. At a speed of 60 mm per second, K1 coped well with medium-hard TPU. 
K1 can be used with third-party slicers. Unlike other manufacturers, Creality does not require binding to account. The device will be available locally by IP address. There is also a proprietary slicer, Creality Print. The version of the program at the time of preparing the video is now shown on the screen. First, you need to add a 3D printer. K1 with its advanced K1 Max version is on the first list. The slicer has all the necessary material profiles. You can customize them or create new ones. There are a lot of settings available, similar to the popular Cura slicer, so we will not dwell on the details. The main distinctive feature of Creality Print is a set of advanced tools, such as, for example, cloud functionality and the ability to create a 3D farm with several printers by sending a task to multiple devices at once. And with the Creality Cloud app installed on your gadget, there's also a remote control option. You can either print your own prepared models or pick from a handful of community-made projects tailored for K1. Other useful functions include temperature and process monitoring, as well as video making when the camera is installed. Now, let's sum this up. We really liked Creality K1. It's probably the most compact model to date among enclosed 3D printers in the category. And it does print fast, as is stated by the manufacturer. Thanks to its speed, K1 can easily replace two or even three regular budget 3D printers. However, like any device, K1 has its disadvantages. For instance, it is far from silent, the fans are noisy, especially the auxiliary one dedicated for the build area. It continues to work up to a temperature threshold of 50 degrees Celsius. That is, after printing is finished, the noise continues for some time. Moreover, the fan will turn on by itself if it was not used during printing. Due to the printer's particular mechanics, rippling can occur on the surface of the models at printing speeds below 150 millimeters per second. Therefore, for some materials that require low speeds, you should print at no more than 40 millimeters per second. As for the stated print speed, these are conditional figures. Printing with such movements of the head is possible only with a layer height not more than 0.1 millimeter and hyper PLA recommended by the manufacturer. For ordinary materials, it is necessary to increase the nozzle temperature and reduce the speed so that it does not affect the productivity of the hot end. The first batches of K1 had an issue with the feeder, but in June the company solved this problem and sent the first customers a new version for replacement. With the advanced firmware, K1 is fully functional, but it lacks some necessary settings such as the height adjustment of the first layer during printing, changing the print speed, and some other features. Still, Creality promised to make it open source, and we hope that all these shortcomings will be left behind. It's no wonder that the printer has gained a lot of popularity in recent months due to its cost and capabilities. Thus, you can find a lot of upgrades for it on the web and in parts stores. For example, PEI plates with granular coating, nozzles, etc. This is Top 3D Shop with the in-depth review of the Creality K1 FDM printer. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. See you soon.